Hey guys, Trevor with Shadow Systems. It's Technical Tuesday. Today we're going to talk a little bit about suppressors and reliability with suppressors. So when you add a great big can on the end of a gun, it does change the way the thing functions. It causes a lot more friction on the barrel as the slide is closing because that weight is levering down the muzzle. The piston, of course, has a big impact on how much energy the slide has when it's coming back. So there are some considerations when you're shooting a suppressed pistol and, and you might have some, some issues. All right, so we want to show you kind of what those might look like, how to test for them, um, and then how to, how to resolve them if you do have any. All right, so I got a couple cool cans here that are in two different size classes. So this beautiful thing, uh, this is the Dead Air Odessa 9. So this is the one that has multiple interchangeable baffles in the stack, and you can go pretty short or you can go pretty long, but it's a dedicated nine millimeter can, and that's usually your first hint that you're not gonna have issues, okay? Dedicated nine millimeter cans will tend to work better than you know, a bigger, beefier can for maybe a 45 or, or maybe a PCC or something like that. Okay, so this is gonna kind of be the lighter end of the spectrum for what we play with today. And then here we have a larger 45 can, again, a beautiful can from Dead Air. This is the Ghost 45M, okay? So quite a bit bigger, all right? A little longer, so more leverage on the barrel, all right? The, uh, the spring that's in the gun right now is a stock uh, spring that would just normally ship with the gun, but I got a couple other ones here. So the yellow one would be a light spring. This is not normally the solution to a suppressor problem. A light spring is usually not gonna solve your problem. What you're probably gonna need is a heavier spring. This one is the 20 pound spring. It is a white uh, painted spring, okay? I'm actually gonna use the 15 today to try to simulate the symptoms of an underweight recoil spring for a can. Um, so we'll have to see how that works out. Okay, so first I'm gonna shoot the gun uh, just normally with, the, uh, with the, the smaller of the two cans and we're gonna see how it functions with a stock weight spring. Okay, so here we go. I'm gonna just shoot three or four rounds normally first. Okay, and then I'm gonna shoot a couple more with a full mag in here where I hold the trigger back after every shot. And what I'm looking for is the most common kind of malfunction with the can, which is the breech failing to close, okay? The spring can't overcome all that extra friction and you might have the gun a little tiny bit out of battery. All right, so again, this is a lighter weight can though, designed for a nine, so we might be fine. Let's see, I'm gonna hold the spring back, or hold the trigger back rather. Okay, it's a little tiny bit out of battery. See that? Okay, if I hold it back hard, I'm getting that ka-chunk at the end. Okay, that time it was fine. Okay, so if I hold back really hard, sometimes it closes, sometimes it doesn't. All right, so right now I'm already thinking that this recoil spring might be a little bit light for this can, okay? Let's try it now with the, the heavier can, okay? So this would be with the 45 version. Again, I'm gonna shoot it normally and I probably won't have any issues, but when I hold that trigger back, that's when I can kind of see whether or not I'm on the edge, all right? So here's a full mag. Works fine, now I'm gonna hold that trigger down hard. That actually did okay. Okay, now just for fun, why don't we stick a 15 pound spring, which we know is underweight, inside this gun and see what we get. And again, we're looking for signs of the breech not closing. That's usually what you're gonna see with a can. All right, full, full mag, in fact, I'll top it off this time, holding the trigger to the rear. Oh, it definitely was sluggish that time. It's a little sluggish. Yeah, it's just kind of barely closing. If you were to be pointing the gun at an upward angle or something, you might have an issue. Okay, now, let's put a 20 pound spring in there. This is gonna close the breech with a little more authority. And again, you're probably not gonna see symptoms of an underweight, excuse me, symptoms of an overweight spring when you have a can on the muzzle, just symptoms of an underweight spring. Okay, so here's the uh, 20 pound spring. Yeah. And I definitely see the, the breech closing with a little more authority. Since the, uh, since the nine one, ironically, was the only one that kind of had a couple bobbles, which by the way, we've been shooting both these cans all day. And I mean, you really got to try to make them not work. They're, they're pretty nice. They work great on this XR. This is the XR 920, by the way, probably one of my favorites. How sick is that? Okay, so we've got the 20 pound spring in there now. 
This was the combination that was a little iffy before. I'll just burn up all the rest of these mags and we'll see what we get. Okay. No, it's definitely closing the breech fine. And I'm holding that trigger down each time. Okay, so that's kind of the deal. In most cases, unless you're really holding the trigger down and shooting to reset, you probably won't even notice it. Um, if you have a can with a really dirty piston, that might be a different story. But usually, if there's something about the gun that's not working, it's probably gonna be underweight recoil spring condition and you're gonna want the heavier spring, okay? The other symptom you might see is if you get a light strike or you think it's a light strike, it could be that the breech just didn't quite close all the way and you couldn't get the round to ignite. So that's another symptom that you might not necessarily attribute to recoil spring with the can on the gun. All right, it's starting to rain, so I think we need to pack up. We'll see you guys next Tuesday. Thanks so much.